Hi there and welcome to the very first episode of the series The Artists Behind the Art. My name is Beatrice Benedict and I'm the creative director of Benedict Productions and together with my very good colleague Beatrice Comoli we will be delivering you some very exciting episodes throughout 2021 about artists behind the art. The first episode is going to be kicked off by a very good friend of mine uh, and I'm extremely thrilled yes I used extremely and thrilled in one sentence to have her as my first guest um, I've known her about I think nine years now 2011 yeah oh my god 2011 when I started my bachelor's degree uh, at the Babish Boy University in Cluj in Romania uh, she was studying there as well uh, we were very active in a German speaking uh, NGO for students Gutenberg and we've attended loads of activities and parties as a matter of fact obviously um <laughs> yeah and uh yeah we've just kept in touch and she currently lives in berlin and works there as well um she also comes from transylvania the place i come from in romania um and yeah i think uh what's really great about this relationship is that we've witnessed each other develop as artists throughout these years. So earlier this autumn we collaborated on a project together, a walk with nostalgia. more about that later. Um, and here we are now, kicking off this first episode of The Artist Behind the Art. And let me tell you, I am incredibly thrilled to have her as my first guest. So without further ado, here she is, Andrea Di Can. So first of all, I want to thank you for having me as a first guest. That's a really huge honor for me. This is also my first interview to do, ever. I did interviews for others, but I never talked about myself because I was behind the camera. Andrea, thank you so much for accepting this invitation. Um, I have just said that I'm super excited about having you as my first guest here. Um, and I think it's such a beautiful way to sort of uh, celebrate our relationship and our friendship as well. Um, and beyond that i am really interested to hear more about you as an artist obviously we know each other for quite a while now as i said nine years but i think i am i, I don't think we have actually talked that much in depth about you as an artist so here we are and i'm very excited and i have my notes as well so guys audience i'm really sorry this is the first one so uh, until i get into it i shall use my notes because why not um i'll just shut up now <laughs> And I'll hand it over to you. So, Andrea? So, my name is Andrea Dikan. I am a photographer and videographer. And I currently live in Berlin. I've been here for the past four years. Where I worked in this uh, creative field. And uh, I come from Transylvania, as uh, Beatrice mentioned. So, we met in university where we got the opportunity to work on different projects. And uh, I'm very happy that we kept in touch after that time period and that we are still able to work together now. So I guess obviously because we are talking about the artists behind the art, uh, most of the time we always hear about the art of a person and what they're doing and either we witness it in theatres or at concerts or in a museum or on YouTube, <laughs> uh, as we usually do. But. I really would like to ask you, why did you choose this specific art? How did you get to do photography or what sort of grasped you so much that you've decided to uh, to carry on with uh, photography? Because, you know, the thing is, artists, uh, I mean, in my in my opinion, or I think that's general, um, they start studying something, but then they end up doing something completely different from what they have studied. <laughs> you know because uh, I, I don't know I think you did PR and marketing right uh, at university so how did it come to photography then well, it might sound a bit cliche but I think um, photography actually chose me I didn't choose it it was always there I remember the first time ever when I saw a camera it was my father's camera and I was very young I think I was around five years old and I remember just feeling an instant interest for this camera I wanted to know what what is this why what can you do with it 
Of course, I wasn't allowed to touch it because I was five years old. <laughs> but then when I, I got older, I, I got my first cameras. It was these uh, point and shoots with the film that you got to develop. You only had like 24 shots or something like that with the oh, yeah, amount of... I remember, of... I remember, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so that's how I started exploring this um, this art, this uh, art form. It carried out, I carried it out with uh, throughout my uh, life. <laughs> it came with me. In high school I was always the one who took the photos at parties. Mm -hmm. Always. Like the most embarrassing photos of my colleagues, I had them. <laughs> Do you still have them? Oh my god. I mean, if guys, if you're watching, well, well, well. <laughs> Lovely little surprises. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Be nice to me. <laughs> yeah, so also when I uh, when I was in college, um, I was again the person who took uh, the photos at our projects, at our Gutenberg projects. Mm -hmm. I didn't start working as a photographer because where we grew up, or the way I grew up, photography was such an unsure field. It wasn't even an option in a way of a, of a job. It was just yeah, there, it yeah. was on the side. So I first, I first got jobs in corporate jobs and I didn't really, it was not my thing. It was such a, <laughs> I had yeah, such I a struggle <laughs> and such a battle inside myself because I knew I didn't I didn't want to do this, I wanted to do something else. Four years ago I decided to move to Berlin mm -hmm. and do this. So here I am, <laughs> doing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ah, wow, I mean, like, what a brave step, isn't it? Just to like, to just to like leave everything behind and just start like something that you sort of knew from the beginning that mm, this this might be something you know but because of the environment or the circumstances before you couldn't really pursue it just because to be honest i know what, how it is when you hear from quite a lot of people saying oh, i was like what, what sort of job is that are you actually going to live off it uh, you have to be incredibly good at it you have to be some sort of a genius and i'm like um yeah j those geniuses I had to work hard to get to that point too so yeah so yeah i mean so basically it's been in your life for probably actually your entire life yeah and then you tried out a bit of a corporate stuff like probably most of us <laughs> and then you ended up doing what you actually wanted to do so well girl hats off hats off for doing it because like literally four years after look where you are and that's why we are here now to talk about this and just to show the people what you've what you've been up to uh fantastic um so could you say at any point can you pinpoint yeah can you pinpoint at something that you would say that this inspired me or uh, or during your development as a as a photographer could you say that there's something that has inspired you in a particular way for example for me I, 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 I let myself be inspired by a lot of things especially art as you can see <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and books, as you can see. But not only, there are also people who inspire me, music as a certain genre of, of, of uh, photography as well, you know. But would you say that there is a person or an object or even a feeling that really, you know, kicks it off and you say like, oh God, this is so inspiring, I need to do something now. It's really hard to, to choose just one thing because I feel that I get inspiration from everything. And um, I remember when I was younger, I used to buy so many magazines, so many Bravo Girl and Cool Girl and all of that. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I completely forgot about those. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> genau. <laughs> cool Girl and Bravo Girl, guys. I mean, this is such a thing in in, in Romania. I don't know if in other Eastern European countries, uh, they they must have had some sort of like. Or, or the equivalent, but I used to love them, especially the posters in the middle of the uh, of the magazines, and I just put them on the wall all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one one part of what sparked the interest, and I always I always thought, wow, this is so amazing to do these photographs and to have them published everywhere, and 
I also, we were getting from school, we were getting National Geographic, the, the magazines. Mm. And National Geographic has a certain type of photography that is just amazing and mind-blowing and you get to see yeah. so many parts of the world through it. It's just, oh, and I always want, I always said, I want to do this. I would like to have my work there. So um, that's what sparked the interest to, to pursue it. But on a daily basis, I would say it's everything around us inspired us, especially now with, with social media, it's really easy to get inspired by other people's work yeah. because they get to share it over so many platforms and you just have so easy access to it. You don't have to go to buy the magazine, you can just click follow on Instagram and that's it. You see their work. So yeah. Um, great examples, Andrea, and thank you very much for that. Um, and now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the moment uh, in our program. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We've arrived at the moment where we are going to share some of Andrea's works. We have asked her to share with us a, a number of pictures that are quite significant for her as an artist. What is your motivation behind it? Why did you share this with us? And why, why is it so important for you? <laughs> so I chose this picture because it it's part of the collection of my first exhibition and I took this picture because I do a lot of events I do a lot of dancing parties and this moment was captured at one of those parties but it's one of those pictures that the organizer cannot do much with it because they, yeah. like, they like to see faces, they like to see lights and all of that so people are attracted so I always have these detailed photos not so mainstream photos <laughs> that you can use for marketing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mm. I used them for myself and um, last year, 2019, I turned 30 years old. So I decided two weeks before my birthday that I want to start the 30s properly. And I organized an exhibition, like it was very, very fast. <laughs> so that right. was part oh. of that collection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I do like, like, I do like the shadow play here. I really love it. I think, I mean, myself as a theater artist, I really love the idea of, of using shadow on stage. And this is a brilliant example of how one can use lights and shadows for stuff. So yeah, uh, I agree with it, Andrea. Um, carrying on, boom, another one. This photo was taken in Paris, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. Um, I think it was 2017 and I went to Paris to see a concert and I went there alone so I knew that at certain times during the night the Eiffel Tower has these lights on it it flashes there we go <laughs> yeah, there we are, yeah. <laughs> so I sat there and watched them and then I was starting to get to my hostel but uh, in front of the Eiffel Tower there was a group of dancers and they randomly started dancing there. And I found it so magical. Everybody around them just stopped and looked at them. Like everybody, even the guys who were selling those, there's always in popular places, there's always these guys that sell the thing that flashes and goes up in the air. Even those yeah, people, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> even those people stopped and looked at them because they created such a, a nice atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So that picture was was taken there. It was a very nice moment. Right, we have another one here. This photo was taken 2018. I was working as a videographer at the International Theatre Festival in Sibiu. And this was the first show that I filmed. I was very mm -hmm. nervous, of course, because I think it was one of the first official jobs that I had as, as a videographer um, especially in this field and I was filming it and I saw this picture I saw it on my screen I also have it filmed but I saw it and I said oh my god this needs to be a picture I cannot I cannot leave it there <laughs> so I took this picture and it was such a wonderful moment it was um, again a beginning of another step in my career oh wonderful <laughs> what an amazing thing that it just brought you back to like Transylvania and then you know it kicks off another like literally another chapter not, not, not another chapter but maybe a sub chapter of your of your career great 
All right, this uh, I think this is the recent one, isn't it? Like this this year this year probably, right? This was taken, I think, at the beginning of or at the end of last year because this year is all a blur. <laughs> Maybe in November. And I chose in this picture because the girl in the photo we randomly met at an event where there were a lot of photographers, there were a lot of uh, models, and everybody was shooting randomly. Everybody. Mm -hmm. So I picked her and we did a few shots and this one is taken, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say this because you were not allowed to, do, to take photos inside, but it's at the Philharmonica and it was, we took it in a matter of two minutes, like she just took her shoes off because it was winter and the coat and I snapped, snapped the shot very very fast and then the security guard was coming next to us and said okay you need to go you're not allowed to take photos here blah 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 <laughs> I was oh like okay God. I'm good I have my oh shot <laughs> I have my shot and a few months later the same girl this is her name is Natalia uh, she contacted me because they have a they had a project they wanted to shoot a movie so she liked the photos that I did so much that she asked me if I want to help them out and I ended up filming a part of it myself so I was the director of photography in for the movie um, we're still working on it because the whole quarantine and everything uh, just delays everything wait like literally girl this is brilliant the fact that you that, because it's ad hoc you know it happened ad hoc and it, I mean me as a lay person in photography uh, I know myself a bit in photography, but I would have never said that this has been taken in two minutes. I would have said that this has been planned so that everything fits that, you know, like even like the, the way she has her body twisted and, and the forms of her body just to, you know, it's brilliant. it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And I'm so happy to hear that she actually called you back to collaborate on, on a different project. I mean, what two minutes can do? Oh, yeah. And I think this one is... Uh... This one is a recent one, isn't it? This is this is literally a few months ago, right? Yes, this one. This one is a still from um, a music video that I've directed and filmed and edited <laughs> and all of it. Um, of course, with the crew. But um, this is a film for a band. They are called Bridget Jones, and we worked together before. We met through Facebook. Mm -hmm. But everything that Facebook can do. <laughs> Uh, we met through Facebook and we did a few sh photo shootings together and uh, at mm -hmm. some point they, they wanted to film a music video so I said I also film, I also do videos and... Oh, a it, bit of self-promotion there? Yes. <laughs> Call me! <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for th talking this through. I mean, what an incredible journey and again it just gives you Dear audience, doesn't it just give you like this amazing variety of things that Andrea here can do? So like literally so versatile. So like from from a two minute shot to uh, snapping a moment in Paris, and then to to something that's being thought through properly. It's, it's just like honestly, guys, if you need if you need a photographer in Berlin, and not only in Berlin, because I think you are happy to travel as well. Um, when it will be allowed outside of the pandemic, yeah, uh, do get in touch. After all of this uh, excitement and everything, I, I, I do believe that behind everyone's work of art, there are hours and hours and hours of work, sometimes paid, some, most of the time unpaid, especially in the beginning. Um, and we, and we, the people who see the results, we don't really um, acknowledge how much energy goes into such things and how much even emotional strain goes into such things. So I guess what I would like to ask you, Andrea, and I am curious to know, in your artistic path up till now, what would you um, consider as, as, as one of the most challenging situation or situations? Um, because obviously you must have had ups and downs. <laughs> Not everything is purple and pink and unicorns and rainbows. Um, I'm, I'm sure that you must have had some, some situations where you, you, you would have been like, okay, this is it, bye. I think one of the biggest challenges for me was, was when I moved, no, before that even, 
<laughs> it was to accept that I want to do this because it takes a lot of work to just accept it and to be up for it to say okay I'm gonna do it and actually stand up and go and doing it and another challenging part was when I arrived here because in Romania I did work but not it was more of a hobby I did it on the side so when I arrived here I didn't have a portfolio I didn't have uh, any connections I didn't have anything and I'm a bit of an introvert so networking for me is really <laughs> not my strongest point so that made it more challenging to to find the right connections to get to the right people to just um do it right yeah i mean girl i know what you mean about you know moving from one country to the other and just you know being placed face to face with reality and what are you going to do and how are you going to tackle this and finding the strength and finding the courage to say yes i can do this i am going to do this and i am going to i like i feel you on that i really feel you because i have moved you know i've moved from romania to the uk initially didn't really think i'm going to stay here was going to stay here you know but then things have developed and i have decided to stay and uh my dream you know was and it still is to to achieve great things in theater you know but it's incredibly difficult like it's one of the most difficult industries and i think yours as well to, to you know to get a grip of so girl hats off and again as i said at the beginning look where you are now like literally look where we are now we are talking about you and your art here and that's mainly because you persevered you know and you found that resilience to carry on regardless uh, of, of the, the circumstances and the situation so now that we have actually talked about all of this and that we've presented your work and um and talked about the, the challenges as well of being a photographer nowadays what would you consider success i think especially because the whole world is upside down now so yeah. it's really hard to to define it i think i'm at a point where i can say okay success is where i don't have to worry i can i can live off my art i or of the work that i'm doing i don't have to worry about paying rent next month so this would be a huge success especially in this time now where a lot of people didn't they don't have any work i also don't have much work right now so the levels of success have changed <laughs> of course i would consider very successful to be published in national geographic for example that's a whole different level <laughs> But right now I'm at the point where I say, okay, this month was a success. I was able to live and uh, pay what I had to pay and not go crazy about it. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I don't know. It's a very. I think it's a very, uh, very um, healthy way of looking at it. You know, um, to make sure that that one can live. You know, because if one doesn't feel in the right place, one cannot create more work more than anything else so i think obviously you've i think you've put uh, you've you know you've hit the nail on the, the head on the nail here because that is really it you need you need to be able to take care of yourself first and then think of higher successes but is there something that you would advise your younger self at any point are there any moments throughout your artistic career that you would be like, mm, you know, if I would have the possibility to just go back in time and talk to myself, I would tell her, Andrea, take care. There is, I can also, I can also tell you the moment because I actually, so as you mentioned, I studied the public relation and communication, mm -hmm. but I actually wanted to study photography. So I didn't get to oh. do that because, um, I listened to my parents, I listened to everybody else who said, oh, all photographers starve, uh, the artists, uh, they are not able to live and all of that. But I find myself because I've learned everything alone. So I didn't do any courses, I didn't do any studies, I didn't do anything. I just learned because I, I wanted, I, I felt it. So I think that would be one step where I would go back and I would say, okay, I'm going to do this because 10 years later, I still ended up doing it. So yeah. it, it was just a, a U-turn kind of, but I still went back to my, to my core. So I would just say, just, just listen to 
what you feel and uh, trust your instinct because it's it's right you're gonna get there anyways <laughs> oh girl how oh, beautiful oh my god i can totally relate totally totally so having said that now uh i think i mean obviously the next question is a bit obsolete because you sort of answered it but if if you would be put in front of young enthusiastic people now not that we are not young we are young but younger <laughs> younger enthusiastic people who are who would love to carry on with this as well like photography what advice would you give them just just go and do it just practice as much as you can ask for help if you cannot do if you feel that you need someone to explain certain things to you because we have this thing oh or at least i i have it and i had it not so much now because I ask now questions but it's more of a oh what they're they gonna think about me if I don't know this but if I didn't learn it there's no way I can know it so just trust yourself just have the confidence to go and say okay can you teach me this can you help me can you explain how I can go and find more clients find more work find more anything mm. just uh, just take the step it's gonna fall into place yeah, have you heard guys? Just take the step, ladies and gentlemen, sorry. Just take the step and yeah, have the courage to face your own gut feelings and instincts. Yeah, wonderful. Um, one more thing to share with you. This is something that we've asked Andrea to do. I think, I don't know, I don't even know what the name of this is, but I think it's like the, the, the meme. Well, it's not a meme, but it's a challenge, you know, a photography challenge. So, you know, those, those photographies that you like, um, you ask people, you have different uh perspectives of what a person does you know like how my my parents see me how i see myself how, how friends see me and so on and so forth but we've asked andrea to do that and she came up with a brilliant thing right andrea there we are there we are care to explain <laughs> so <laughs> what what my friends think i do i chose that photo <laughs> because i have amazing people around me and they always believe in what I do and that photo is from the exhibition from my birthday actually that's why I also have the crown and I'm uh, all fabulous over there between my work of course, of course, <laughs> <Me>. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so that's the reason I chose that one uh, what my mother thinks I do <laughs> I think it's very self-explanatory <laughs> started a bit to take it more serious but it was um, a long way <laughs> to get there <laughs> yeah what I think I do that's a, a photo from the set from the music video yeah so I think uh, I'm directing and uh, creating and uh, all of that and what well, I, I act yeah <laughs> and what I actually do is I'm waiting for my laptop to load everything and to <laughs> to render <laughs> Yeah, that's, um, that describes my life perfectly. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can even see you as like, just please load, please. I don't have time for you, just load. Oh girl, yeah, <laughs> but very, very funny. Thank you so much for sharing this. Um, right, so just before we wrap it up, um, now that we know what your parents and your friends think about you, <laughs> Um, can we just share with the audience where they can actually find finally where they can actually find you? So I think this bit is like a self-promotion. So hit us, girl. So you can find my work on my website. It's Andrea Dican Photography. Andrea with two E's. Very important. <laughs> Andrea Dican Photography dot com. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram. Uh, I have Andrea Dikan Photography and I also have another account, it's called Story of a Butterfly which has a lot of um, more of artistic shots <laughs> and you can watch the Creative Immigration series on YouTube you can just google Andrea Dikan Creative Immigration and it's gonna pop out pop up wonderful, yeah 
Great. Ah, oh, fantastic. Well, Andrea, I think we are slowly approach approaching the end now. Um, so um, let me just take this minute and thank you from the bottom of my heart for um, accepting this invitation and being the first guest um, of this series of interviews for the artists behind the art. It's been a great privilege and it's been really nice to get to know you, um, not only as a friend of mine, but, but as the artists behind behind your art um yeah and yeah i mean kicking off this series with you is brilliant we wish you the best of luck with all of your upcoming projects in 2021 and i really hope it's going to be a better one than this year so happy new year um because this is going to air just before the end of the year uh yeah hopefully Ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for joining us today at what it is, the very first episode of The Artists Behind the Art. Um, do follow us, um, like us, share us, you know, sharing is caring uh, on your social media platforms. Um, but until then, all the best and thank you for tuning in at The Artists Behind the Art.